In the previous video, we were able to understand how debt would increase the risk of a company. To be specific, it would increase financial risk. For one, having debt will increase the volatility of the earnings per share. That is, when we use debt, we would incur interest and every small change percentage-wise in EBIT could lead to a greater percentage change in earnings per share. Now, second, if we are going to use debt to finance the operations of the company, the tendency is that, unlike equity, failure to pay interest and principal payments can lead to the eventual bankruptcy of the company. Because of these two reasons, debt is a risky way of financing the company's operations. But what is the appropriate debt-to-equity ratio? Or more formally, what is the optimal capital structure? For this session, we're going to talk about the optimal capital structure. Now, debt and equity are sources of funding for the company. That is, if we are going to increase our assets, we need a source of capital to fund these asset acquisitions. It can come from debt or equity. Whether we are to use debt or equity would depend on what its impact on the weighted average cost of capital, WAC, would be. Take note, if the company's assets are utilized, it will earn a rate of return. On the left side of the balance sheet, we would see that assets would earn returns. That is an inflow. But on the right side of the balance sheet, we're going to see that having debt and equity capital would incur costs for the company. That's the cost of capital, an outflow. Of course, we want a greater inflow relative to the level of outflow. As such, we would want higher rates of returns for our assets and lower cost of capital for our sources of funding. Hence, we want the weighted average cost of capital to be as low as possible. So in that way, more assets become acceptable. In our attempt to make our WAC as low as possible, should we use debt? In answering the question, should we use debt, it is not as simple as it seems. Debt has a lower cost of capital. Interest payments are lower than cost of equity capital. Hence, using debt will pull the WAC downward. However, debt also increases the financial risk of the company. Thus, it pushes investors to seek more return from their capital. As a result, pulling up the weighted average cost of capital. So there are two opposing forces if we are going to use debt. Let us refer to the following graph. We are going to look at variables and how they change as we are going to move to a higher level of debt, the x-axis. As for our weighted average cost of capital, the apple green line, initially, we would see a downward trend as debt level goes up from 0 to 20%, 20% to 40%. But after this point, we are going to see an upward trend from 40 to 60% and from 60 to 80%. As for the stock price, we would see an upward trend initially from 0 to 20, then 20 to 40%. From this point, it goes down from 40 to 60, 60 to 80. At the debt level of 40%, we would see that this would give us both the highest stock price and the lowest weighted average cost of capital. So this is our optimal capital structure, the capital structure that would give us the lowest possible WAC and the highest stock price. Take note that the company's earnings per share is at its highest at the debt level of 60%. This, however, is irrelevant when arriving at the optimal capital structure. 
In order for us to appreciate the impact of debt to the cost of equity capital, we may use the Hamada equation. The Hamada equation states that beta sub L is equal to beta sub U times 1 plus quantity 1 minus T times quantity D over E. Where beta sub L is the levered beta, the beta of the company with debt. Beta sub U is the unlevered beta, that is the company's beta with no debt. T is for tax rate. D over E is the debt to equity ratio. Let us refer to the following sample case to illustrate how the Amada equation is used. H Motors has 10 million pesos in assets which were financed entirely with equity. HS Beta is currently 0.955 and its tax rate is 40%. Use the Hamada equation to find HS Beta when it is financed with 3 million of debt and 7 million in equity instead. Levered Beta, that is the beta assuming we are going to use debt to finance the operations, is equal to the unlevered beta times 1 plus 1 minus the tax rate times the debt to equity ratio. The Hamada equation. Now, we are going to need the unlevered beta, beta sub u, 0.955 multiply it by 1 plus 1 minus 40% times the debt to equity ratio of 3 million divided by 7 million. We are going to have 0.955 times 1 plus 0.257. That would give us a levered beta of 1.2. Now, if we are going to notice the movement of the beta, if the company is not financed with debt, its beta is 0.955, the unlevered beta. But if the company is to be financed with 3 million debt, leaving only 7 million for equity financing, we will have a higher beta of 1.2. Thus, if you are going to notice, the beta goes up if we are going to use debt in our financing. In summary, if debt increases, beta increases, the cost of equity increases. This may increase the WAC. This may or may not increase WAC depending on whether the lower cost of debt relative to equity or the increase in financial risk would prevail. Let us refer to another sample case to illustrate how this can affect our weighted average cost of capital. Q International, without any debt outstanding, has a beta of 0.95 for its shares. Management is considering a change in the capital structure from a debt to equity ratio of 0 100 to 20 80. This change would increase the beta on the stock to 1.12. And the cost of debt after a tax of 30% will be 5.1%. The expected return of the market index is 15%. Risk free rate is 5%. Shall Q International proceed with the change in capital structure? In answering this question, we need to be aware of the capital asset pricing model. We have the following. R sub S is equal to R sub RF plus RP sub M times the beta of the stock. Where R sub S is the required rate of return on the stock, R sub RF is the risk-free rate of return. RP sub M is the market risk premium. Beta sub S 
is the beta of the stock. Aside from the capital asset pricing model, we should be also aware of the weighted average cost of capital formula. The weighted average cost of capital is equal to R sub D times 1 minus T times W of D plus R sub S times W of E where T is equal to the income tax rate R it sub D the required rate of return on the debt WD the percent weight of funds coming from debt R sub S the required rate of return on the common stock W sub E the percent weight of funds coming from equity stocks. Let us calculate the weighted average cost of capital before and after the change in capital structure. If there is no debt, we would have the following R sub S. This is equal to R sub S. The required rate of return on the equity capital is equal to the risk-free rate of return, 5%, plus the risk premium on the market. Since it is earning 15%, we would say that it would be 10% above the risk-free rate. That is a premium of 10% times the current beta of the stock, which is 0.95. The current required rate of return is therefore 14.5%. This is R sub S if there is no debt. In calculating the weighted average cost of capital, we would have no cost of debt, no financing from debt, plus 14.5%. This is the cost of equity capital times 100%. Considering that 100% of our financing comes from equity capital. In short, weighted average cost of capital is also 14.5%. Now, let us calculate the R sub S assuming there is debt, which finances 20% of the company's financing need. R sub S is equal to 5% plus 10%. Our beta is expected to rise to 1.12 if we will use debt, 20% of our financing needs we will have a cost of equity capital of 16.2%. In calculating our weighted average cost of capital, this time we have debt, an after-tax cost of 5.1%. This finances 20% of the company's requirement. Then we have a cost of equity of 16.2% which would finance 80% required financing. So you would have 5.1% times 20% plus 16.2% times 80%. The weighted average cost of capital is 13.98%. Now, is this a good change in capital structure? We are going to evaluate on how it would affect the weighted average cost of capital. Initially, it would appear that this can increase our weighted average cost of capital. Why? Our cost of equity goes up as a result of this change. However, by doing so, a portion of our financing requirement will come from debt, which is cheaper. This is what it means when we say there is an opposing force, when we are going to use debt, it can lead our walk upward or downward. In this case, notice that the weighted average cost of capital went down and therefore 
this is a good move. It is a good idea to change the capital structure. This would be our concluding topic for financial leverage and capital structure. Like, share, and subscribe.